Uh, we also have another issue which was trending last week, and that's the issue of the loan apps. Uh, we saw FCCPC, that is the um, Federal Com Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, uh, weighing in on the issue of loan apps, declaring some illegal, asking Google to delete uh, others from their Play Store. Uh, and it's not new that we've been getting some strange messages uh, tarnishing the image of some people we know and some we cannot even place their names to our phone booths. But let's have, uh, uh, to help us understand more about this, Mr. Babatunde Rukera is the Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Mr. Rukera, good to have you again in the studio. Good morning, thank you. So we saw that uh, for about two weeks now, you've been very active in uh, your communication on activities around the loan apps. Anything new we should know about as Nigerians? Well, are there two things that I think are important? I think uh, consumers should become, uh, do some uh, background research before determining who to borrow money from. There's a list of approved um, digital money lenders. Now that list doesn't mean that these approved digital money lenders will not violate the law. It just means that we've checked their systems, we understand how their business is, and we know where to find them. So if something goes wrong, we can find them. And um, there's a tracking method for them. However, what we've also seen is that some of the otherwise authorized lenders are engaging in, in illegal activities. And so what we've spent the past uh, two weeks doing is cleaning that list up. And what we had done earlier on was to um, start a registration process that brought quite a number of them into a mainstream regulatory framework. And we had repeatedly said to them that there are certain violations that would continue, um, the engagement would continue with respect to. But certain violations would be one time and that's it. And those types of violations were the ones that require, uh, involved defamatory messaging, naming and shaming, and harassment as methods of recovery. And so in the past few weeks, uh, this has increased again. And so we've gone back in. And so we're periodically delisting. And so there's really not a long process anymore. We find out we're going to take you down immediately. We would ask the banks to freeze your accounts and we would tell Google to take you down and you will not have the opportunity to go back. In the past two weeks, I think we've taken down about two dozen and we're working on more right now. They will be removed from Google Play Store as we find them. We're also making sure that uh, service providers, including banks and the payment systems uh, gateways, uh, stop providing services to them. We've identified a particular uh, gateway in at least two banks that seem to be the platforms that most of these uh, illegal operations use, and we're engaging with those uh, institutions also. Um, in the past few days, we've seen uh, things have come down somewhat again, but it's very important that we continue with the uh, scrutiny to make sure that things don't get out of hand again. Is there no way to handle this from the root? Must they have come up first and then, you know, do the wrong before we now get them down. Is there no way to, you know, the gateway to make it stricter, you know, so that they don't just get in? Well, we're exploring new ways on a daily basis. I mean, uh, the digital marketplace is uh, the most dynamic place in the world today. And Nigeria is not excluded from other countries that are trying to get a regulatory grip on some of this. As far as... Uh, Putting a business on online, it's pretty simple. And what we're doing is really trying to make sure that we get it at the very root. I mean, and you see it was investigations that have brought us this far to determining that we would work with uh, Google to make sure they can get on the Play Store. We wish sure we work with the payment gateways to withdraw the ones we don't know and to make sure that nobody can start getting service from them without an approval from us. But the nature of these businesses was such that um, payment gateways didn't need to know exactly what your business was prior to providing services. Uh, Google also didn't uh, need to have regulatory oversight over the services you provide 
before I align your app to be on Google Play Store. And so it's actually a regulatory uh, uh, intervention that has now increased the level of visibility that gateways and Google are required to have before continuing to allow um, services to, to these businesses. So one day at a time, we're strengthening what the regulatory framework must be. Uh, the other thing you must know is that you could sit anywhere in the world and literally create a website. Uh, they, used AP, they used APKs, um, which, quite frankly, we have no way of stopping. I mean, if you, the only way to stop an APK is to say to the Communications Commission, can you take down this website and prohibit access from Nigeria? But all they need to do is to immediately set up a different one and a different one and a different one. And sometimes, even when you prohibit access from uh, Nigeria, they can use a VPN to override even that access, uh, access denial to get in. So it's a very tough thing to regulate businesses on, on the internet. Uh, but I'd say that we've um, recorded remarkable um, success. We're trying to rein this in. And I say that because we can literally gauge uh, the public space and see when the tension goes down. And we can also uh, tell from our engagement with other regulators globally who are also taking some learning from uh, some of the efforts that we've succeeded with. All right, but on the other hand, you also have the consumers, those who patronize them and maybe uh, cannot meet up or refuse to pay back. Uh, seeing that these uh, money lenders, they do not receive collaterals or anything, what would be the right way to handle this with consumers who maybe at the end of the day after taking loans, they are not paying back? I think consumers who take loans uh, with the intention of not paying back are part of the problem, and they constitute themselves, as themselves, they constitute an impediment to consumer protection because what they're doing is um, they are an obstacle to something consumers need. And uh, some of the most virulent opposers of uh, digital money lending are those who have been victims or have taken loans and have not paid back. But whatever the case may be, I agree that uh, um, unsecured loans and consumer type loans like digital money lenders provide are the most uh, risky uh, loans and they actually plug an important gap in the uh, value uh, in, in the value chain. However, they still must figure out ethical and legal ways to recover their loans. Uh, for instance, uh, you just give an example of receiving messages about people you didn't know. Perhaps you shared your telephone number with someone, and that person has, uh, someone who that person borrowed money from now has access to your private or otherwise proprietary information. Your telephone number is your private data, and you have the prerogative to decide who you give it to and who you don't give it to. And so for someone else to have direct access because of a contractual obligation that has nothing to do with you is even a violation of your right as a third party. And so we must continue to rein this in. And globally, there are methods of uh, um, um, uh, recovering loans that are unsecured. For one thing, uh, unsecured loans are the riskiest loans, like I said, and they have the highest interest rates. And so we're not even arguing about whether the interest rate should be similar to secure traditional credit for, uh, systems. But there are other ways to recover these loans. Uh, there are credit systems. You have a credit bureau in Nigeria. And what the digital money lenders need to do is they're the ones who are going to develop that industry. They're the ones who are going to develop the processes. But to the extent that you can find these easier ways of harassing and shaming people instead of doing the hard work of developing the infrastructure for determining who's credit worthy and who you should extend a loan to, we would just not allow that. Mm. So is there like, do they have like an association, a common platform, you know, that you reach them and perhaps can share with them some of the other ways that they should be approaching or embracing? Well, so one, one very important way is um, strengthening and broadening the framework of a credit bureau. A credit bureau, uh, and, and, because they're using BVN. And so it means that you're able to identify the person uh, because a BVN is, a, is an identifier. And so when you have uh, 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 an irresponsible borrower, blacklist that person at the credit bureau and do not extend uh, um, loans to people without doing at least a minimum background check. And you can do that. 
And it, it turns out that some of the most uh, uh, problematic um, borrowers are repeat borrowers. They are, they are chronic borrowers who have repeatedly failed to, to pay back uh, uh, previous uh, balances. And so that has two sides to it. You have a potentially irresponsible borrower, or on the other side, you have someone who's gotten into problem, who's been harassed repeatedly, and is really staving or just postponing the evil day. And both of them can be, both of those issues can be resolved if there's a common database that digital money lenders can go to to determine if they should extend loans to people or not. Indeed, they charge all kinds of fees. You could even charge a fee for checking the background as part of the uh, commitment or the management fee of the loan. So there are, there are absolutely appropriate ways to do it. It's just that those are more institutional and they, uh, they take a lot more work than just uh, hiring a bunch of people to harass people and then defame people or even um, um, uh, publish untrue uh, libelous information about people. Hmm. All right, so I guess uh, the FCCPC will just have to keep clearing the mess as it uh, comes uh, until we can get these uh, digital body lenders to follow the right path, work with data that's in existence. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Irukura, for your time this morning. Thank you. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, the palliative is still a major one. Here in Lagos State, we've seen some packages from the Lagos State government, especially when it has to do with transportation, but everyone doesn't feel included in that package. We'll talk about that after the break. Do stay with us.